Hey everyone, my name is Amanda and I'm the Fun Size Reader. And today I want to talk to you about The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So I read this uh, last week, I think, and I didn't have much time that I waited in between reading the first book and the second book because I read the first one really, really late. It sat on my shelf for a long time. Anyways, so um, I read this one because it had just come out and I was coming off of the high of reading the last book. So. Um, before I get to like, this is going to be a spoiler video because obviously it's a book two, it's going to spoil everything that happens in book one if you haven't read book one. Um, so before I get to that, if you haven't read it and you're just like, is the second one even good? Should I even pick up the first one? Freaking do it. I mean, do it. This, this series is so good. I haven't felt or found really a YA series that isn't fantasy that I've really, really loved in a long time. I think the only other one that's kind of comparable is Good Girl's Guide to Murder. That's not a fantasy YA series that's got multiple books connected um, that gives you that mystery feel. So if you just wanna know if book two is good so that you don't waste your time reading book one, so far, the series is great and just go pick it up. If you're here for spoilers, <laughs> that's what I'm here to talk about too, because there are things that happen in this book that I was just like, what is going on? What is happening? Like, it's it's that kind of book. So we all know that this is a mystery. It revolves around Avery, who is mysteriously gifted this inheritance, and uh, Tobias, the man who gifted it, gave, blah, 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 the man who gifted it to her. <laughs> <laughs> was a billionaire in Texas. He has four grandsons and he left pretty much everybody in his family nothing. Uh, we know that Tobias has a son who is presumed dead. They never found his body after this big fire on an island and they had to go through this entire game to figure out kind of why Avery was given this uh, inheritance. So at the end of book one, we know that Toby's alive. Toby, the son, did not die. That's why they didn't find his body. And that Xander, the youngest grandson, who didn't really participate in the games of the first one, uh, was his game was basically the start of this book, Find Toby. So that's where we start. And this whole book kind of is about the premise of finding Toby. But along with finding Toby, we find a bunch of secrets about Toby and about the family. like. The first time that we figured out that Toby was Avery's father, I about died. I was so shocked. I was like, okay, this is nuts. This makes complete sense why he is visiting her after her mom died and why he like tried to have a relationship with her. Um, and then newsflash, Toby's not her father. Like what? I was getting whiplash going back and forth and back and forth every time that they figured it out it was, figured out it wasn't, figured out it was. And so now we know at the end of this book that Toby's not her father, but he kind of considers her his daughter, which I don't know if Tobias really truly knew that. I don't know. Maybe Tobias assumed that it was, that Avery was Toby's daughter, but it's kind of interesting that we do find out that Toby has a daughter, but it's not Avery. So that was really kind of crazy. I will say that I do think it was really interesting the part that like the Laughlins played into it because the, a lot of the time throughout the whole book, I did think that the Laughlins were shady. Like th this when they kept boarding things up with Toby, like boarding up the wall, don't, you know, look into him, don't do anything. I was like, what is happening? They, they've got to be in on something. And then to find out that that was really their grandson and that Tobias adopted him because their daughter got pregnant really young, couldn't take care of the baby. So they gave it to this billionaire and ended up living on the property and watching their grandson grow up. Like it was just so sad. It was so sad. Like that hit me deep. And I completely understand why Bex and Emily's mom like behaves the way she does around the Hawthorns because she feels that everything, just all of her babies get taken away from her because of this Hawthorne family. So like that one hurt, that one hurt a lot, but it, it brought the Laughlins in, I feel like in a deeper way that didn't made, make me think that they were 
in on these plots against Avery because I was starting to feel that. I was like, who who is the the snake here? Who's going against Avery? Is it the Laughlins? Like they they always seem to not be happy with her. I thought that was an interesting piece of the story. I was not at all expecting the person to be going against Avery to be her bodyguard, like Eli. I was not expecting Eli. I thought maybe Oren for a little bit, but Eli I wasn't expecting. And it makes sense. I, I never trusted Melly. I never trusted her, even though she's one of like Jameson's girls or which, whoever, whichever brother it was. Was it Jameson? I think so. I never really trusted her. So that made sense to me, but I totally didn't anticipate her connection with Eli at all. I also knew that Grayson's dad was gonna come into play. And I think the way they did that was really good. Or the way that uh, Jennifer did that was really, really good. It, it had that whole revenge theme, you know, like he was going after Toby who he knew was alive because Avery couldn't keep her mouth shut um, and trying to get revenge for his nephew. I did feel so, so bad for Grayson though that he had to go through all of that like heartache of his dad wanting nothing to do with him and it just that hurt me that hurt me deep because I know in my last video I asked <laughs> I asked y'all if you were on team Jameson or team Grayson because obviously love triangle right story of my life I love books with love triangles I hate that I love books with love triangles but I do and it's just it's just the way it is okay anyways so Jameson or Grayson in the last video I didn't know which team I would be and I feel like this is one of the very few times where I am not on the team that the main character picks in the book I think I'm team Grayson and I like Jameson but I love Grayson and that being said, if Jennifer turns Grayson into a villain in the next book, which I could kind of see happening, I will be pissed because I just love him. I think he cares so deeply about everything and just wants to protect everybody. And he's so hurt. And like, I don't believe that he wanted Avery to die in the explosion. I don't believe that at all. I, I just feel like he was in shock and he didn't know what to do because he was back in his head in the Emily situation where someone was dying and he didn't know what to do. Like not everybody knows to run into the danger. Like that's just not in everybody. And some people freeze and that's okay. Like that's just part of being a human. And so I think that's Grayson. Whereas Jameson is like the run into danger kind of person. So I just love him. And I'm really sad that she wants Jameson because I'm team Grayson. And okay. So I was talking to one of my friends about this and I think, you know how at the very end of the book, she signs the documents to be an emancipated minor. She made a comment in there that writing her will wasn't the only thing that she could do. So I, my first thought was, is she going to get married? And then the next scene, right after she signs the Emancipated Minor, she's talking to Jameson. Like, I think that in the next book, she's gonna try to marry him. And I'm gonna have a problem with that because I don't think she should be with Jameson. I think she should be with Grayson. But I, I, I messaged my friend and I was like, is, is she gonna do this? Are they gonna do this? Like, what's gonna happen? What's the other reason why? she can be or what she can do being emancipated so i don't know what's coming one thing that did bother me about this book was that at the end of the first one we were left with an epilogue that led us into like needing to know what happened in the second book and i don't think that this one did that for me there was no epilogue at the end there was nothing it seems like everything was just like tied up and done it doesn't seem like there's anything moving forward. I know there's still kind of open storyline, but it didn't leave me with that, oh my God, there's more. 
And obviously the cover for the final gambit just came out. We know that there's going to be a third book, but I wanted that anticipation at the end of this one. And I feel like I didn't get that as compared to the first book. I love the mystery. I love the puzzles. I think Jennifer, her, the way her mind works in creating all of this to the point where you, the reader cannot predict it, I think is an unbelievable. Like kudos, Jennifer, kudos. I don't know how you do it, but it's amazing. If you haven't read it and I just spoiled everything, sorry, you shouldn't have kept watching. But if you have read it, tell me what you think below. Are you team Grayson with me? Please be team Grayson with me. <laughs> Are you team Jameson? What do you think is gonna happen in the next book? Like, did I miss something in the anticipation? Um, sometimes that happens. Sometimes I read through it the end too fast that I forget that something is gonna go on in the next one. But um, tell me what you think. Did you like this one as much as the first one? Because I did. I thought they were both great. Yeah, I just want more people to fangirl over this with me. So leave me a comment below. If you want to chat more, uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at The Fun Size Reader. Can't wait till the final gambit. See you guys next time.